As the ever-popular and now all-inclusive St. Patrick's Day Parade marches down Fifth Avenue this year, New York's Irish community, including its LGBT brothers and sisters, will march arm-in-arm -in, -arm in celebration of a common heritage. But just a dozen miles away on Staten Island, this year's St. Patrick's Day Parade was marred in the opinion of many yet again by the spirit of exclusion. Members of the borough's ancient order of Hibernians, the parade's organizers, told the leader of Pride Center of Staten Island that they were not welcome to march, claiming that their banner promoted, this is their words, promoted the homosexual lifestyle and goes against the tenets of the Catholic Church. Both national and international media covered the ban, and it was accompanied by admonishment by state and local officials who support LGBT rights, along with local businesses along the parade route. Yet this year's Staten Island St. Patrick's Day Parade has quite literally and figuratively passed by. Now, question remains, what happens next year? And if the rainbow flag might eventually fly alongside the emerald down Forest Avenue. Joining me now with a discussion about all of this and a plan of action is the Pride Center of Staten Island's Carol Bullock. Carol, welcome back. Nice Thank you very you much. So Thank just you. about a week or so ago that we first <laughs> talked and now we're back continuing the conversation. But let me ask you to do this for some of our viewers who might not have heard our first conversation or followed this. Yeah. Um, tell me first, your organization, Pride Center, what does Pride. it do? Uh, so the Pride Center of Staten Island is a safe environment for the LGBT community. We offer support not only for the community itself, but for their families, uh, providing services such as free mental health, free HIV testing. We also have wonderful programming for the youth as well as the elderly. Uh, we also provide education for organizations all throughout Staten Island, and we do advocacy work as well. So your group wanted to march, St. Patrick's Day. Not just march, but march under your own banner. Correct. And other groups march under their own banner. Yes. Tell us what happened when you went to the organizers and you made your application to march. What were you told? Um, so when I first walked in, I, I stated my name and what organization I was from. And I was immediately told that uh, there was a vote taken, and the answer was no. And when I asked why, I was referred to Larry Cummings, who's the president of the parade committee. And in the discussion, he told me that we go against the tenets of the Catholic Church. Through some more dialogue, he told me that our banner promoted the homosexual lifestyle. Because he did say we could march, just not with our banner. Why was it so important to you to march with your banner? Instead of just saying, okay, fine, we'll, we'll be a presence, we'll be there, and we'll march. Why did you decide that you needed your banner? First of all, there are many other organizations who are allowed to march under their banner. It's an organization I'm extremely proud to work for. We do so much great work all across the island. To say that a banner would promote a homosexual lifestyle is just ridiculous. And uh, when I told him just that, that it was ridiculous, I invited him to come to the center to see what we actually do, and our conversation stopped there. But as an organization, we want to proudly walk with our banner and celebrate our Irish heritage. Did you have any discussion with him about the fact that now the parade here on Fifth Avenue has changed, and now it does allow groups to march yes. with their own identity and their own banners? Absolutely. Any, any reaction to that? Any no. response to that? No. As a matter of fact, I even said, you know, the Prime Minister of Ireland is an openly gay man. Would you allow him to march with us under our banner? I said, he can march, just not under a banner. What sort of reaction did you get from other public figures and community members before the parade took place? Overwhelming support from all elected officials. It, it was incredible. Who, 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 uh, who? The borough president, Jimmy mm -hmm. Otto, Governor Cuomo put something out. I can name every single elected official, Debbie Rose. Um, and this was public support? Yes, public support. Not just support. a phone call saying, hey, I can't get all, uh, up front about this, but you know, we'd like you to be able to do it. This was people saying, you can put my name on, on this endorsement. Absolutely. Right. How about in the community itself? Uh, again, overwhelming. We had immediately, within the first week of really getting this out there, about almost 30 organizations who signed on to support us. And I have to tell you, I have gotten phone calls, emails every single day from individuals, either from Staten Island or beyond our borough, just in support saying they, they can't believe this is going on. What can they do? Did you go to the parade? 
I did. I yeah. did. And in what capacity? And did you did you march at all, or were you simply a spectator? How did you handle it? Yeah. So um, it's a great day, a great celebration, as I told you before, and very important to Staten Island economically as well as just you know camaraderie. And I was personally invited to a VIP brunch prior to the parade by um, Assemblyman Mike uh, Cusick and Mike McMahon, our district attorney. So I went to that, and it was great. The, again, the support was incredible. After that brunch, I went outside, and I walked down one side of the street on Forest Ave, walked back up, went across, and went down the other side. And the unbelievable thing to me was how many supporters stopped me, thanked me. There were rainbow flags as well as Irish flags flying along the sidelines. So it was really, really nice. This is, might be a hard question for you to answer because I'm asking you to sort of prognosticate. But knowing the struggles yeah. that the LGBTQ community has engaged in, especially to become part of these official functions, if you will, and then juxtaposing that with what you saw that day, yeah. How do you think your group would have been received if, in fact, you had had the ability to march under your pride banner? I have to believe that it's going to be incredible when it does happen. I think the support that I've seen just, uh, I, I know we would have been received incredibly well, just as I was at that brunch prior to. I, I mean, it was, there wasn't a negative thing, not Nothing that came my way that day. Last question for you then. What's your plan for next year? I'm assuming <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to apply to March again next year. What do you plan on doing between now and then that might hopefully change the, the attitudes and the decisions? Great question. Um, you know, I think with all of the visibility that has come out of this, I've already had some discussions with elected officials one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and I know that those who definitely supported us are going to help in any way they can. I think there's a strategy that we'll come up with. Um, and as I had mentioned, the religious leaders across Staten Island will be involved in that as well. They've offered full support in any way they can. So I think collectively we'll come together on this and come up with a solution. Well, we'll plan on talking with you again next year as we get close, and we'll see where we are. When I have my marching shoes on. <laughs> and, uh, Carol, always good to talk to you. Thanks for spending some time with us. You be well. Thank you very much.